All right, thank you, Jenny Lin, for the introduction. And again, I'm Michael Trong. I'm the executive director of the Chinese American Museum. And thank you again for logging in today. I hope everyone's friends and family are safe and healthy. We are really excited today to host a poetry reading and a workshop with Stephanie Burke and Bobby Lee. And my colleague, Jenny Lin, will provide more details on how the workshop will work later. However, I do want to take this moment to acknowledge some of the individuals that dedicated the time and energy for the museum during this time. First, I want to thank the board members, and some of them are actually logged on here today, including Joe Kwan, Dorothy Tomashiro, and Susan Dixon. And to the, the board members that are logged on and I didn't see the names on your list, I do apologize if I missed your name. I also want to thank our staff who has been working really hard to create today's workshop. And we have more uh, workshops and events planned in the future and hope you can follow us on Instagram and on Facebook to be updated. Lastly, I do want to thank the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs and the Big Read, an initiative of the National Endowments for the Arts in partnership with the Arts Midwest for supporting this event. And I want to remind everyone again that today's workshop will be recorded and we'll be making it available uh, in the public uh, in the future. So please check our website for the, uh, the link. And I want to pass it back to Jenny Lim. Thank you, Jenny. Yay. Thank you. So thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. It's our very first digital workshop. So CAM is digital. I appreciate everyone's patience with any technical difficulties. Um, so thank you. Thank you to my talent too, because I have been very much like, oh, is this going to go well? So I really appreciate all of that. So I am the public programs manager. I'm really excited to be hosting this workshop with all of you. Uh, so today we are going to be experiencing Stephanie Burt's poetry in this first early half. We'll be di discussing it, talking about components of identity. Uh, Bovi has made this wonderful art making activity inspired by this poem. So in the later half of this workshop, we'll actually be able to make art alongside and just hear a little bit more about what that art making is going to be about. So um, I'm gonna share a little bit about our facilitators before we jump right in. Bovi Lee, I don't know if we can spotlight her, but Bovi Lee is a Hong Kong born LA based artist known for her contemporary cut paper. Her recent works explore migration and its impact on one's sense of identity, home and belonging. Lee came to the US to study art and has earned dual MFA degrees in painting from UC Berkeley and digital arts from Pratt Institute in New York. Shout out Cannoneers slash Pratt Cats. Uh, <laughs> she has exhibited at museums and galleries worldwide, including the Nevada Museum of Art, Hong Kong Museum of Art, and the Museum of Craft and Design in San Francisco, among many, many others. Bovi is a big cat lady and self-identified fitness maniac. If she wasn't an artist, she'd be cooking and will probably cook for the museum very soon. Oh. So, anything you want to add, Bovi? Uh. Uh, yeah, I think the cooking series would be uh, a blast. Yeah, to, I enjoy to be, that. yeah, to be announced, that will be coming forthcoming. To be announced, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Stephanie Burt, thank you so much. You're you're calling in all the way from the East Coast, so thank you. Um, Stephanie Burt is a literary critic and poet who is professor of English at Harvard University and a transgender activist. The New York Times has called her one of the most influential poetry critics of her generation. <laughs> Let's take a moment for that. <laughs> um, Rise from the Lights is the last book published under Stephanie's former name, Stephen. In its early pages, Bert invites the reader to remember what it's like to covet something during childhood, even if it isn't gender related. Stephanie likes cats, ferrets, cephalopods, and lizards, especially chameleons. Anything mm -hmm. you want to add, Steph? Yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me here. Also, uh, the, this book, because of, uh, you know, attention and generosity from people like the Chinese American Museum in the city of Los Angeles is now in a second printing. So you won't have to, uh, if, if you do want the book and you don't have it, you don't have to take a Sharpie and remove my dead name from the cover. It's got my actual current correct name. Yay. Thank you, Greenwood Press. Thank you to the, the NEA and uh, everybody involved with the Big Read program, it's really an honor, and I hope this turns out to be a good use of your time. Um, and I've been so enjoying looking at, at Bovi's work and Bovi's range of work, and we're going to get to talk about that work, um, which is, you know, what, what brought me here uh, so later in the hour. But I think I'm supposed to read first. 
Um, I'm actually going to go over a couple uh, Zoom tips first, and then I'll turn it over to you. Zoom tips. Zoom, Zoom tips. Zoom tips. For those who Is are that like, not That's like steak tips. What are steak tips? Okay. It's a way of making... I'm sorry. So it's a way of making I'm about steak. to share my screen for anyone who's watching and might get a little surprised. So share my screen over... So some Zoom tips for this workshop. As we mentioned, especially if you're just coming in, this part of the workshop, we're asking everyone to just stay, uh, keep their audio muted, uh, as well as their video off, just so that we can make sure that there's aren't, there aren't any, you know, noise coming in from things that we don't want. Um, I want to share that there is a chat feature that we're gonna be asking people to use whenever we go into the Q&A portion. You have the option to private chat, and also select uh, everyone. If you are choosing everyone, that's gonna be, everyone will see it. But if you are having technical difficulties, use the private chat and you can actually uh, private chat either Chinese American Museum, which you'll access me, Jenny Lin, or you can private chat Rochelle Schumar, my colleague who is helping me host this event today. Um, there's also a feature that I'd like to point out, which is raising your hand, which if you click on the participants, you can raise your hand at that bottom little right button that says raise your hand. And then whoever is host, who is Rochelle, will be able to notify and see that you need some help. I'd also like to suggest that you have uh, the rest of this workshop in speaker view. There is uh, a couple different views that you can use for Zoom, but this is gonna be best experience in speaker view. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie uh, to read her fantastic poem, Paper Stephanie, that inspired this whole workshop really honored and I'm seeing that the host has spotlighted my video for everyone I'm not seeing myself at all and there we go and thank you so much and I'll just read the poem first Here you go. paper Stephanie I am less flimsy than boys think I can stand up with some help I can raise my hand my glass or my bangle or my japanese -y fan, though never all four at once. I know the name of the artist who made me and made my hair with its scribbles and angles, and my other hair with its Byzantine curves and its coils, and my other hair that I wore when I was a flapper. I have been cut out, refolded, unfolded, and put back into a folder. I have been lost and found and lost and found. Someday I will be left in a cardboard box, the kind loosely associated with shoes. Should I fear scissors or love them? Once I was colorless, I was self-consciously artistic, I was a fluster magnet, I was scared, I rang my new telephone, I was the bell of a ball where even the gloves were bell-shaped, I could not hear, I did not look like me at all. A pencil mark grazes my ankle. Ankle, A chestnut stallion, tilted an inch off the vertical, propped on three out of four legs, watches over me from the jury-rigged off-white lean-to of an envelope that serves him as a bedroom or a stall. What if I had a side you could not see? Once I was interchangeable, then I was loved, and now I am not so sure. I have been upside down, my face in thick carpet, in coach and spring wheel trap. My ballet shoes, riding boots, and brickle edge tap shoes circled around me. None of it hurt. I fear misadventure, and yet I would like to be shown. I fray and sag in my thick bustle, my tan riding skirt, my mythical petticoats. Maybe I'll never leave home. So that's a poem about paper dolls and the commercial cut paper art that for many people in many countries is a part of childhood and especially girlhood. And behind it is not only the, the larger and really cross-cultural tradition of making two-dimensional dolls, uh, and making dolls to try out clothes on and outfits on and play with in a way that involves your appearance, but also the specific master of American commercial paper doll art, 
Tom Tierney, who drew uh, during his very long career uh, dozens or hundreds maybe of costume cutout paper doll books along with other kinds of illustrated books and made a, a living out of making these books of dolls you could cut out and dress up with paper tabs and slots. And the story behind the poem, and we're about to see some, some images. Do you want to put up a Tom Tierney image or two? I've seen enough of me. You can see what uh, this great commercial artist of paper dolls. Yeah, that guy. Uh, keeps cutting out. Zoom keeps cutting out for me. I'm not sure why. Our, 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 You're coming our, in clear for us. Okay. Yeah. Are our viewers at home seeing images of paper dolls by Tom Tierney? Yes. Yes, we they are. are. Okay. Perfect. I'm, I'm, I think I'm on some kind of administrator periscope where I'm not <laughs> seeing what they're seeing. Uh, but I can live with it as long as they're seeing Tom Tierney's great paper yep. dolls. And he made, uh, you know, paper dolls and costumes of the 1920s, the flapper era, uh, great looks of the English Regency, Byzantine costumes, which is one of the ones that we have. Uh, I think he at least tried to do paper dolls for various other cultures, formal dress up traditions. And they, these turn out to have been a very important part of many people's girlhood. And of course, I didn't get to live as a girl when I was little because I didn't tell anyone I was a girl and they didn't know. Um, and so this along with this poem, along with some other poems in the same book, uh, looks at the pieces of, of girlhood that I sort of missed in real life. And it speaks for the paper dolls who aren't quite sure if they're real, aren't quite sure how long they'll last, aren't quite sure whether their role is to be looked at or played with or kept and sort of museumized or discarded or worn or turned into other things the way that all dolls ultimately are. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to share that component. Um, I'd like to invite, you know, either Bovi or anyone from, you know, at your home, if they'd like to ask any questions using the chat function, just about what you've just heard with the poem or just anything about uh, Stephanie's work as well. When I, when I saw and Bovi, I, when I first read the poem, I was so moved by it and Aww. I felt such, um vulnerability coming through uh the voice just felt so uh authentic and true oh um, thank you and i and of course i mean it's incredibly visual and artistic and also i don't know the universe aligned that day that i happen to be a cut paper artist and i'm seeing all of these uh descriptive, you know, beautiful words, you know, I was struck by so many uh, of the of the words that I have been cut out, refolded, unfolded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I was colorless, was self-consciously artistic. Um, so, I mean, in your honor, uh, Stephanie, I, I made a little, can I show it to her? I made okay. a little. Oh. I made a little doll based on your poem oh. using your oh. imagery. Oh. So like, a, like a Japanese fan oh. and the Byzantine coils, the bell-shaped gloves. Thank you so much. That is just... Right. Can we get all of it on the frame at once? The and the riding That's pose. amazing. Can we get all of it in frame at once? I'm just, just so moved. I also oh. actually have it scanned into the PowerPoint. I'm happy to share it too. Oh, wow. I did not know this was coming. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hit you with that. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you. I wanted I, to surprise you because that's how much I love that poem and uh, respond to it. I mean, I just feel such kinship when I when I read it, and you your poem inspired me to develop the, this whole workshop. So I'm I'm incredibly grateful to be introduced to you and also to your work. Aww. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm not sure how to respond. And when I found out that you were inspired by paper dolls, I was like, 
oh my God, that was like my childhood's favorite activities. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, like a lot of things, I discovered them as an adult and love them. And I have, we have two kids and um, they're both very creative. One of them really went through a, a paper doll period and didn't continue with, isn't making cut paper art the way you do as a sort of single medium artist, but definitely makes things involving elaborate cut paper in, in a multimedia way and is still interested in, in costumes and, and representations of the diversity of how people can look. Uh, and uh, we, we get a lot of superhero costumes right now. Um, a lot of Steven Universe stuff, if you're familiar with Steven Universe. Oh, that's a fantastic show. It really is, <laughs> uh, but, but a lot of drawings. Um, and a lot of, of cutouts and media conscious manipulations of, of the human figure. So, so cut paper art continues to be a, a thing in our house, although paper dolls less so than they used to be, but I still love them. I think that this is a great segue, Bobby, for you to start discussing a little bit more about your work. So yes. that we can see your cut paper work. Um, would you like me to put up the PowerPoint at this point? Uh, yes. Please. All right, let's do it. So yes. you can all see just how much Bovi's work translates to this poem. So go ahead, Bovi. Okay, so um, I want to start out with the present, you know, so I, I, I'm currently based in Los Angeles. And even though I, my work is rooted in ancient Chinese paper cut tradition, I make it my own and I uh, seek to bring it to the contemporary times. Uh, so I am not a scissor cutter, I'm a knife cutter, and these are my uh, tools and materials. And I want to work with something very humble, uh, very simple, and to, and to make art that is, you know, opposite of that, that's very complex, that's very rich. So this is my family photos, and um, the reason why I'm, I want to show this is because uh, I feel that uh, our identity definitely does not start with just ourselves when we were born, right? We started long ago. And uh, I was born and raised in Hong Kong and my parents got married there and that was their banquet picture. And that was even before I was born into the picture. And then uh, the other one is the uh, uh, photo with my uh, mother who passed away when I was in grad school, like the first year after I came to the United States to study art. And that she was holding me and I was maybe a year old or something. And you can tell I have never, I have never ever changed. I'm still the same, I still look the same. <laughs> All right, can we go to the next slide? Um, so um, when I first beginning uh, learning Cut paper. I taught, I taught myself cutting paper because I was trained as a painter and a Chinese calligrapher. So I came to cut paper by pretty much by accident. So I was researching, you know, I was just looking at uh, historical or traditional examples. Here you see on the lower left hand corner a uh, opera mask. And if you point to, can you use the pointer and go over to the mask, one of the eye on the, the left eye? Do you see a, a baby's head there? So I thought this is very peculiar. Uh, so I decided to make my very first cut paper ever in 2004 uh, to interpret it as like a role reversal kind of um, uh, my portrait with my mother, right? My, our relationship. So here um, she's, she's, her head is, is in my eye, so this piece is uh, titled Beholder. Um, because I sometimes feel like um, we were taking care of her when we were younger, so I just wanted to um, use, like be inspired by the tradition, but completely uh, change the narrative and look inward uh, to start with my own personal and familial history. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So then, um, the traditional cut paper continues to inspire me, and I, my goal really is to contemporize it. 
how can I make it relevant in the 21st century? So you're seeing uh, this doll, this paper doll uh, that we go, like that's the theme of, um, of today is the paper doll. Um, that's the traditional Chinese paper cutting. And I loved the form, so I created a series of work based on that. But um, what I would be commenting on is about gender issues, like the expectations of being women or being in particular my you know in my case a asian or a chinese woman so sometimes we are we are not asked to be outspoken for example so uh, that's one of the work is called childhood torture covering mouth is what it's about like when I, when we were in grade school teacher we was very strict you know if you talk too much in class they would ask you to cover your mouth the entire class so you could not speak <laughs> so this is what um what the piece is about. Uh, and I made a series, I think they're in the next slides, if I had included that, yes. Okay, so this one is called polling years, like if you were being bad, you know, you're making too much, you know, commotion in classroom, you know, you, you know, that's one of the ways that teacher made you, you know, make you, um, make you do is to like, you know, hold up your ears like that, the entire class. Um, so, then the other one is called pinching cheeks. So this is self-portrait. This is essentially images based on myself. Um, so this piece is uh, called Temple of Heaven. When I looked at the, you see the lower left-hand corner there. That's the original Chinese paper cutter. But I pasted my 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 head uh, and using the Temple of Heaven, which is a very well-known landmark in Beijing uh, uh, on my head as if it were a hat. So sometimes I feel like um, mm -hmm. I'm like a representative of my entire race, you know, that, mm -hmm. that feels like you're wearing a very big hat of your, of your entire country. Yeah. Uh, do I have another slide? Yes, okay. So this is called trading identity. I made it soon after I became a US citizen, that when I sworn in. So, and at that time also that was, I mean, not that long after Hong Kong was returned to China uh, in 1997. So um, the, immig the immigration journey was extremely long. It took me 11 years to become a US citizen. So during that time, I felt like an octopus because I just had to do this, that, and that. Like that was just a million things and paperwork and, and ID cards, you know, and all of that. So that's how I made this self-portrait as an octopus in order for me to trade my identity uh, to become American. So this is a uh, very recent work and uh, the challenge the gallery gave us was to do self-portrait without the likeness of, likeness of yourself or your body or your face. So that's what I came up with, uh, which is a, a hybrid uh, plant with the Bauhinia flower, which is the official city flower of Hong Kong and mm. the official country flower of the US, which is the rose. So mm -hmm. I feel like I'm that hybrid Plant, right so I have all a lot of uh, motifs and symbolism in the work that um, illustrate my personal history like uh, coming to the US on the school bus and um, uh, the the gold mountain because I was mm -hmm. at UC Berkeley I was in the Bay Area and yeah. and uh, you know those are the symbolism there's so many nuances in my work that there's not enough time to really talk about each uh, symbolism but uh, I'm I'm um, I'm I'm open to having Stephanie you know discuss my uh, my work give me some insight about <laughs> my work. yeah so I've been looking at uh, examples of it and just really enjoying delving into it and one of the things that I've been seeing is a divide in your work between some of the installations where you've got a lot of boats, for example, or 
uh, hands that have rectangular ends where you've got an array of smaller scale or less detailed paper objects in three-dimensional space. And then the work that you've just shared with us, which is two-dimensional, mm -hmm. and I know papers have thickness, but the third dimension of them is very thin and flat, let's say. Mm -hmm. And just hyper, hyper detailed. And we're creating that one original out of a single sheet of paper must have taken who knows how many days and weeks. Um, do you feel like there's a divide between your installation work and your single flat sheet of paper work? I whether think, you're trying to express different things? Well, I think visually there, there might be some because in, um, but I think conceptually they are very tight together actually. Mm -hmm. So my latest focus is on immigration issues. So those are the I I installation work that perhaps like you mentioned, the paper books, yeah. those were my, uh, my, my big stack of 10 years of legal papers. Um, oh, you know, wow. from being a student on student visa to, you yeah. know, getting the green card and, yeah. you know, well, swearing in as uh, sworn in as a citizen. So there were, you know, 300, <laughs> 300 pages of paperwork that I kept over a decade. And you so, felt like it was in it, you, you, you felt okay about turning them into artwork. You didn't feel that you needed them legally anymore. I didn't even know why I kept them for 10 years. And then until, until what happened, right? Uh, the, the, the migration issue becomes such a, um, such an urgent subject matter that I then at that point found out why I had kept it. So it's, it, 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 is, it was such a discovery of, you, yeah. I never knew why I didn't throw them away even though my, my lawyer told me that I could throw them away, but I didn't. You so were I, keeping I, it for this, yeah. Yes, I, I'm keeping it for, yeah. for the installation. And yeah. I, want, I want people to be able to just travel inside, like travel inside because of the yeah. scale Installation that they're not lost in all of the details yeah. in there, so they become more of a participant, you know. Because mm -hmm. like if you're inside the installation, when you know three hundred bows hang, that's very intricate, you know, already. Yeah. So um, yeah, I feel like I want I want a little bit of a a, a difference, a divide. Even yeah, the the yeah. word is correct, you know. Um, to differentiate my installation work and my cut paper work. That makes a lot of sense. Can I ask more questions? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, so you're describing uh, a thematic continuity in uh, you know, over 10 years of work that we've seen that's there on the web that you've shown us. Um, I guess more like 15 from what you said about when you began working in this medium. Um, have, have, have the emotions behind the work changed? Do you feel like you approach your, your topics and your techniques in the most recent, the most recent stuff? Uh, let's say, um, oh, now I'm seeing older work. Um, the work that you showed us, or maybe in The Sea Will Come to Kiss Me, which I guess is, is three years old, does that feel like it's, it's different emotionally? from some of the earlier stuff, so from the early 2010s, say? Yeah, that's a long span of time, you know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the emotions definitely change, even my, uh, the themes changes. Like in the very earlier, in the, my earliest works, I really sort of look inward. Because I was new to cut paper, I wanted to start within myself, right? Because that's what a subject matter that I can explore and, and dig deep. Um, so I started with that. And then, um, and then I expanded that to environmental issues in nature. And I know that you, you also are passionate about environmental studies. And I your work that. also is incredibly, incredibly personal. But, you know, you have a passion for environmental studies. Yeah, I, I mean, to yeah. me, yeah, we are such you know, fluid three-dimensional people that there's not 
like I feel that if you are honest, mm -hmm. you there should be a variety of of things that you want to explore and express, right? So yeah, um, yeah. At some point, I just thought, okay, enough about myself because I had, you know, I done I it. had done it. Yeah. So now it is for me to extend my worldview into what is around me. Yeah. But yeah. it is at an extension of of me it's not separated from me right yeah so for me nature has always been in like important in my work and i really feel yeah. that we're so disconnected and that's really because my work everything has to be connected so i need to bring yeah. that yeah bring that back to us right through my one piece connected paper cutout yeah so yeah yeah and then the same way like immigration issues right so there's this othering you know that's happening us that's versus right. them that, okay. that dis disconnected us divided us so i want my cut paper to also you know connect that thread you know I'm, i love that we're describing it i i love yeah, that we're describing that, it that, cut paper yeah. art is an art of connection mm -hmm. just as, as it's the thing that the medium allows you to do is to emphasize connection. Exactly. I it's love that about, idea. It's all about the connectivity, the inherent connectivity of it that really draws me to it because I'm the person that believes uh, everything happens and, and not random and they're not disconnected. So it is a way for me to connect the dots um, that's why that's why um i don't necessarily use collage i always insist on cutting uh from one blank piece of paper i feel like yeah. both even though that's so much work even though it's in, i mean impossible yeah. work like this why right but does anyone yeah. else do it are you the only person are you the only person who works this way or is there a whole community of people doing this kind of cut paper art at your level yeah, I think there are other people that also do um, uh, connected mm -hmm. work. Yes. Do you know them? Yes, but we have a community. That okay, there is a community. community. That answers my question. Yeah, that answers my question. Okay. yeah. I feel but like this is the DIY, I don't know if you remember the 2008 economic crisis. That that's when the DIY movement really, really um, gotten very popular. So um, then there was a surge of cut, young cut, cut paper artists that. Uh, wanted to um, involve in, in the medium. So it's, we, it's an exciting field. We have someone from uh, our audience just uh, completely mirroring what, what you're saying, Bovi, saying that what you're saying is really resonating with them and that they predominantly cut animals. <laughs> and they're That's in the UK. Great. They are in the UK. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. for That's great. <laughs> yeah, we're staying up this late. My goodness. What time is it over there in the 2 UK? 2.30 a.m. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Can I think this is, a, this is a good segue, Bobby, for you to introduce the workshop and the ways that yeah. Stephanie's poem uh, was the jumping off point for your workshop. Oh, yeah. Bobby? Yes, I mean, because <laughs> I... Because I organized, because I developed this workshop around this poem. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, uh, honestly, when I read the line, should I fear scissors or love them? It actually mm -hmm. reminds me a lot of us discussing this workshop digitally, where we're like, is this a little <laughs> aggressive to be like cutting at the mm -hmm. screen? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's the, um, I mean, that's the paper doll not knowing because the paper doll in the poem has been printed out commercially, but of course kids are, can alter them. Mm -hmm. uh, that which you know made her can also unmake her. That which makes her more elegant can also mar her. That's how experience works. And that's, I guess, how the experience of being on a Zoom workshop works. <laughs> Evidently, if you're cutting paper on a Zoom workshop. Yeah. So are we transitioning into the part where Yes. Yeah, so Bovi, please Bovi introduce, introduce your workshop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the workshop um, stay quite true to the poem. So we're going to work with paper and mm. cut out. 
and we're gonna do some collage and uh, there's several there's there's two approach that I want to show you guys and also some materials uh, and the template that we all sent you I don't know if everybody downloaded that okay so this generic person now the reason why we made this generic person is is rather conceptual because we we you know because I believe why we all sort of born with like a blank piece of paper and then uh, we develop you know we develop our identity uh, over time so um, so there's two approach that I want to talk about that you can consider uh, creating when you create your own cut paper doll so this is uh, a collage approach okay so this is actually my my interpretation of the project. So you see butterfly and birds because both of them migrate, the monarch and the and the birds. So being an immigrant, so that is the two that that really speaks to me. They often appear in my work, and then you will see Bauhinia um, flower. That is the the Hong Kong flower. It's on the Hong Kong flag, that? right? Hmm? That's on the Hong Kong flag, the flag of Hong Kong. Yes, yes. The Bauhinia flower is our city, official city flower. So, and this is in its natural state, sort of. Like, I cut them out or print them out. So you guys can think about, like, what tools that's <laughs> available, what equipment you have at home. So you can cut them out or print them out, right? Uh, in different scale, you can use repetition like I am doing here to create and you also don't need to I want you guys to feel very free and imaginative and creative and not having to feel like you have to confine within the person's shape or you can even use that as a starting point but you can print out image like photos of yourself and use that as a as a base to to build your collage so for me the, the lakes part here, the American flag, right? The stars and the striped shoes. So the reason why they're at the bottom on the feet is this is the land that I, I, I came to, that I walked on, that I built mm -hmm. upon. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and being displaced, right? Because I, I left my native home country. So that's why these are in flight, you know, in their flying. So that, that's how I sort of uh, arrange my you know my paper doll here using this um, method the other approach do I have any questions about this approach if not I go to the next one yes and I'd also like to share at this point um, now that we're moving into the art making you can feel free to turn your video on if you would like um, and you can ask your questions still through the chat or raise your hand if you have any questions as well I know there's many of us, but it would still be really great to see your faces and see the art materials that you're working yeah. with. I would love to see that. So please. So the, do, you, do you guys have any sort of imagery in your head that really you feel like represents you, like your favorite childhood toys or animals or? Yeah, would anyone like to share? Shapes? Anyone want to share? I can share some photos that I brought ready. I don't think I'll be cutting them <laughs> because they're very special to me. Um, but I actually brought this photo of me and my grandfather who raised me. And I love it because oh. I uh, am wearing my sunglasses upside down. And I think that is, <laughs> that's very fitting of my personality. I'm a very kind of bubbly, goofy person. So I have a lot of photos like this as a child is wearing things backwards. And I think that's my approach to a lot of things is going about it in a kind of backwards way. So I brought this at the ready. So you can always make a scan, a photocopy of it, and then you can use sunglasses because you mentioned sunglasses. Mm -hmm. So maybe sunglasses would be one of the, the collage, you know, image that you can use. And yeah, and, the, and the, is there the ocean behind you or? Was it an ocean behind It you? was Beautiful. actually uh, a park because when I immigrated here to America, I was, I immigrated through the U.S. Navy. So we were on Navy bases, which have a ton of children's <laughs> parks 
on military housing. Oh, oh wow. So <laughs> this was at like one of like three military parks that we had like sandwiching wow. our home. So yeah. That sounds like a very rich resource you can tap into in terms of creating, you know, imageries. Mm, like, definitely. Yeah. Even just like the smell of like fresh cut grass or something like that reminds me of those moments. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Should I go on to the next approach? So why don't we discuss your materials? Because we did give everyone a pretty long list of materials if they had available. Okay. So I think, of course, first and foremost, you need to have some paper. So <laughs> I, well, because, you know, stores are not open right now. So we, we just pick regular Xerox paper that you have. So plain white paper is fine. Um, and um, now I, I suggest that if you're not familiar with knives, you can start some of your images with scissors. But because I'm a knife cutter and I use exacto knife. So if you have craft knife at home or even box cutter, that would be that you can try using to cut, mainly to cut more details, right? Because scissors cannot get to like really detailed parts. So you can cut out the big shape and then use the knives to cut out the finer details if you like. So then we will have pencils because if you want to draw, because the other approach that I have is, uh, is to draw, is a drawing. So this is the paper doll that I made for Stephanie based oh. on her poem and I drew oh, it onto wow. the, the, oh. the first, if people can see that. So if you, I mean, if you would like to draw, right? Because these I printed out from the computer, I downloaded the images or my own photographs. But if you like to draw and you're good at it, you can definitely, I just use, Pencil to go over it, but when you cut out though, right, you want the piece of paper to be underneath it, and then you staple, you make two registration points so they are stable. So when you're cutting, it's not moving around, okay? So that would be a useful tip. Um, okay. Can you talk mm -hmm. about some of the uh, symbolism that you chose to pull out of Stephanie's poem that you put onto the paper doll that you created there? Yes, for sure. So if you look at the poem, uh, okay, can can someone recognize some of that in the poem though for me? To make it interactive for everyone? Mm. So I also want people to like, think about where to put what, right? You don't have to stick with like, like our anatomy. Oh, the hand has to be the hand, you know, the head has to be a head, looking head, like, so for example, in the poem, uh, Stephanie mentioned uh, the Japanese fan. Yeah. So I have that. Maybe Stephanie recognized some of them. Them meaning? The symbolism that she- yeah. The symbolism. Yeah, there's yeah. so much there. I know, so you do. A fan, there's a uh, there's there's a fan there's the the kind of um there's bell shapes there's bell shapes right in the hands um there's uh i don't think there's horse stuff but there's i feel like that there's, skirt right it's kind there, of like a riding skirt or that something. is the riding oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was wondering that's right that's a riding skirt thank you and um, there's a riding and then too. yeah and then the the way that the kind of drapery or or rope like that's uh, the Byzantine patterns. yeah that's the Byzantine it's a, it's, uh, it's, pattern yeah yeah because and your bell shaped bell shaped gloves yeah I got that yeah yeah the bell <laughs> yeah yeah and then are those those are those are un those are mismatched. Feet. There's a riding boot uh, and there's a ballet shoe, right? Is that what you were trying to yes. do? Yes. That's, that's yeah. so perfect. That's exactly right. I feel seen. Oh. I feel seen and it's perfect. And when I look at that, there's also the mismatch between the ballet shoe and, and the riding boot also appears to put one foot in front of the other, which gives mm. the, the, the one-of-a-kind paper doll a kind of three-dimensionality that 
it must be very hard to pull off in black and white cut paper art, and that's normally done in commercial paper dolls with color contrast. So that is incredibly cool. Thank you. So I want to point out that we have about 10 minutes left of Stephanie with us. Um, so if there are any questions at all for Stephanie, her poetry, anything at all, this is the moment to ask. If anyone wants to put it in the chat. And then I'd also like to pose that before you leave, Stephanie, maybe we do like a, a Zoom screenshot of everyone or something. It'd be great to commemorate this moment. Oh, yeah. I've been asked whether this poem is online and it was first published, it was, it, um, it's, it's not clear. Um, it was, hang on. Um, I don't think it's online yet, but you know what? Would you like to put it online at the Chinese American Museum site? Is that okay? Fact? Yeah. Um, so it's absolutely gonna be okay. What we need to do, and I can do it uh, as soon as we get off the air, is to get permission from Grey Wolf Press, who published the book. Perfect. Because technically, like, I don't, I don't control the rights to its reproduction anymore because it's in this book. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they won't object, and I'll just CC you. Um, yes. But yeah, it's so, uh, Angela. Uh, if if you aren't able to get the book, and uh, you can't, for example, use Google Books to take a look at it, which sometimes works. I haven't tried that with my own work, so I don't know. Um, oh, thank you, Tracy. Oh, uh, you check back on, on the museum site in a few days, mm -hmm. and I hope they can make it available. Um, it's really so flattering to have a poem like this. Well, well for Everything, sure, it's, we'll, it's we'll email so everyone on the who who registered, and we'll let them know so that they can have access to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if if it does go online, that's great. Are there other? I guess are there other questions for me? Um, Any other I, questions? I actually have a question for you. I'm here for that. Okay, perfect. So I had written down that, um, especially since people are joining a little bit late too, mm -hmm. in, you, my, in your bio, you make, there's a note specifically that Advice from the Lights was your last book uh, with your name, Stephen. And I wanted oh, to know, geez. like, did you know that that was going to happen? Did that, did that uh, you know, affect oh. the way you compiled the poems yeah. so or this is a this is out? a sure so this is i guess paper doll relevant because it's a poem about how you represent yourself on paper and how representations of the self on paper mm -hmm. uh are you are are always incomplete and always subject to change later no matter how accurate and careful they are so mm -hmm. that is relevant to the poem you wanted to focus on and to bovi's amazing art um so i came out as non-binary and sort of told the world, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a guy and a girl at once, and it depends on, you know, what my context is. And sometimes I will present as a girl, and sometimes I'll present as, as a guy in like a t-shirt and jeans. Um, in about 20, from 2011 to 2013, and the, the New York Times kind of did it for me, which was very useful. I didn't have to send everybody I knew email and a Facebook post saying, hi, I'm trans. Um, but I was, trying to be non-binary, which if some of our paper cut artists today aren't familiar with that, people who are non-binary are not simply male or female in terms of who they feel they are. They're both or neither or uh, some third thing or it depends what day you ask. And I have friends who are non-binary and it's a very stable identity for them and it's great if you are non-binary and I was trying to do that. Um, and, and that's actually not who I am. Uh, I'm a trans woman. It's very simple. Uh, my gender is female. Uh, people didn't know that when I was growing up. Uh, and I, you know, we fixed that. And I was trying to figure out whether that was a good move for me to take and whether I was going, I was known as Steph for a while informally, and I still answer to Steph. Um, but I decided that Stephanie was the right name for me, and in fact, I'm binary, and I'm a girl, and uh, you know, please make a note of the, the correction. During 2017, I knew I was going there, and a lot of the book advice from the lights, it's a coming out book, it's about a book about figuring out who I'm supposed to be and, and what my gender is, and what it would have been like to grow up with the gender that 
is right for me instead of the one that was wrong for me. Um, and when that was going to press, people who knew me knew that I was deciding. And I wasn't sure what I wanted my name to be. And there are poems about that in the book. And Grey Wolf actually asked, are you sure you want us to send this to press with the name you currently use? Because we know you're figuring things out. And I just wanted the book to appear. Mm. And, and I, what I didn't want was to change my legal name twice. And I didn't really know what my name was supposed to be. So I just said, go ahead and you know, hit print. I just want the book to go out there in the world. And because the people at Grey Wolf are wonderful, they had a cover design, and I don't know how conscious they were of this, that put the name on the cover in uh, green uh, sensor of caps on a black background in the center of this very girly, beautiful, collage pink and green page. And that means that when I sign or encounter copies of the first edition of the book, which has my dead name, uh, dead names are the names that trans people no longer use, and it's, I understand why you were doing it here. It's considered rude to bring them up, um, usually. Uh, oh, hi, Charity Wilson. Thank you. Stick around. Um, stick around for Bobby Lee. But uh, they, they, they printed this amazing, amazing cover uh, in such a way that when I signed the book, I could just take a Sharpie and correct it to Steph Burt, which is the short form of my correct and current name. Mm. Um, and largely, frankly, because the city of LA decided to, to love me this much, the book's been able to go into a second printing with Stephanie Burt, which is the name I used and, and, and you know, my first choice name now uh, on the cover. So that's the story of the name. Um, I didn't write the NEA's bio for me myself. I don't know that I would have included that detail, but that's why it's better to have critics who aren't you write about you. Um, and I'm grateful for all the attention and it's, you know, it's not wrong. Um, and there are, I should say, there's other poems in this book and in the, the work that I've done since that are about other forms of two-dimensional visual art. Um, although I don't know that I've written anything about specifically cut paper or paper dolls since then. Maybe we, we should talk. We actually, we have one, another question too. Yeah. Is, Stephanie, do you have any advice for people who want to start writing poetry? Where do you start? Ooh. Yeah. So, from uh, you know, the first question is what are you reading? Um, figure, you know, read, read widely, read until you find someone you want to imitate. It's very rare for people to write poems they want to keep that sound like them uh, without writing poems that sound like their favorite poet first. So read and read widely and read the past and read people who you found for yourself. Um, read magazines. Uh, Try to find people who might share your taste in poetry. You can do that online. You can do that by going to local writers groups. You can do that often with, by taking classes and taking poetry workshops. And translate. W.H. Auden, who's a poet I like a lot, said that the only real school for poets was, was translating. Um, and you don't have to be fluent. I know that a lot of people who are following this particular broadcast are likely heritage speakers of Chinese. Uh, who may be from all the way from fluency to my relation to Hebrew, which is I can kind of sound it out. Um, but you can translate in the sense of taking a poem in one language and making a poem in another inspired by it, even if you're very far from fluency and from a language that may be yours or maybe not yours. I've never translated from Hebrew or Yiddish which would be the you know, heritage languages for what it's worth. Uh, but I translate from ancient Greek and that's really fun. And I get effects I would never have gotten if I weren't adapting poems from ancient Greek. Uh, and there's a couple of those in there. And that's the best quick way to learn to hear what you're doing and to learn about all the sonic choices and word choices that you make when you're writing a poem is to start with a poem that you admire that's in a language that's not your language and try to adapt it. So uh, read, read widely, try to find friends and peers who will read your work uh, in academia or out of it. You don't need academia, although some people find it helpful and translate. That's the advice. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Um, if there aren't any other questions, I would like to invite, if people are okay with us taking a bit of a screenshot before Stephanie leaves us. Oh, yeah, I have, um, I have kids I have to deal with and I'm, so not, I'm not making, I'm doing the portion. If you're, if you're okay with putting your video on, this is the moment to turn your video on so that my social media person can take the screenshot. <laughs> Oh, hi. It's so hi. cool everyone. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> hi. Yeah, Bovi, can we talk later about, like, more of your work? Because I really want to keep this conversation going. We'd love to. We'd love to talk more about your work. Cool. Okay. Do we have, do we have, we can get contact info through the museum. Yes, I don't absolutely. Take, I really don't want to take time away from all of the awesome people who've signed up to actually make visual art with Bovi Lee. Yes. Um, this is your time, not my time, but are we taking a, a screenshot? Yes. Uh, Alyssa, take the screenshot and then um, go ahead and message when it's all good. So everyone just wave. Say hello. Hi. 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 Hi, Hi there. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we're good then. Okay. Do you need anything else from me or can we move on to the... the, the I think we're going to jump right in back okay. into our art I'm gonna, so Thank I'm, you, Stephanie. I'm going to... Uh, thank you. I'm going to ask you one more question before I go. Um, can you show me some of the results if people are sharing the results? Because I want to see this. Absolutely. That would be great. We will stay in touch. And again, I'll put it in the chat again because it's kind of scrolled away. If you've got questions for me, uh, Twitter. I'll should I put my Twitter. I'll just put my Twitter in here because my Insta is not really public in the same way. Um, I know we were looking for you. <laughs> I I am on Instagram, but. I am the kind of person who lurks and you have to have permission to follow me. Um, and there's, yeah, like Twitter, Twitter. Sure, that's very uh, big poet, big oh, poet God. Instagram or Twitter uh, it's, outlet. It's, I mean, I honestly, I hadn't thought of it that way. I'm on Facebook <laughs> I, and that's not big poet. Uh, if you want to find me on Facebook, you can do that. You can also sure. just email. I'm going to put my official email in here if anyone, if people feel like Twitter is scary. Awesome. Um, I can be emailed at Okay. Yay. Bye. Thank Stephanie. you. Everyone say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you so much. Thank you to bye. everybody. Perfect. Okay, so I, again, at this point, please feel free to have your video on. We welcome you to show some of your artwork while we continue making. Um, Bobi just went over the approaches that you can take. And if anyone would like to share what approach they would like to take or are planning on taking, working with their template, um, please do share. I'm going to go into grid now so I can see more people's faces. Um, okay, should I scroll to the screen where people are um, showing video? The they can have their camera on or not? Um, I think whichever you prefer, Bovi. It doesn't okay. look like that many people are have their camera on anyway. Right, so. exactly. So, uh, yes. So why right, don't you so walk us through? We were talking about the materials that we right um, exactly. So I mean, I want to keep the materials just sort of like everyday materials that you already have, like pencil to draw, erasers to correct, uh, staplers, you know, staples to make sure that if you do cut out like uh, the, the drawing one, you know, you want to cut out on top of it to stabilize the paper underneath it so you, you know, it doesn't shift. Um, then we have, uh, I mean, Rulers, you know, maybe you would need a ruler somehow. I don't know printer if you want to use collage materials right of uh, Photocopies you can shrink the sizes in photocopy, right? So to make it, you know I Interesting if you use I mean I use a lot of repetition in this approach, but it could be all different You know different things that are important to you that you feel like that really represents you 
Uh, Does anyone so have I, any questions about the specific materials that Bowie outlined in the list that you received with your registration? For example, does anybody know, like, um, like I use exacto knife, but I use number 11 blades. That's what I use. So the tip, when you use it, be really, really careful because the tip is extremely sharp. Oh, that's, uh, Tracy, Tracy also <laughs> uses that. Tracy also uses uh, 11, right? Oh, well, it looks like 11, but it looks like a scalpel. Yes, I, I use like a surgical scalpel. Like I used to use that. But I feel like, do you feel like the scalpel blades really, like it bends left and right? It, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> but you're used to it, right? You like using it. Tracy, your audio is not on. Like, do you yeah, you can, you can unmute at this point too, Tracy, if you're comfortable. Yeah, do you wanna, do you wanna talk to us about your, your tool to unmute your video? Yeah. Um, I've also, it's called Slice, it's a, a ceramic blade. It looks like number 11 though, don't you think? Yeah, that, that, that's the number 11 one. Oh, that's number one, okay. No, it doesn't matter which one. As yeah, the 11. Like, yeah, I think that one looks really yeah. good to me too. Because yeah, you that, can do... That's number, oh, I can't get it, there we go. Yes, you can do such fine work with it, right? It's so, yeah, yeah the tip is so useful, it's so sharp. Great yeah. job. But I've, okay, great. I just bought this one, it's from a company called Slice, it's a ceramic blade. Oh, okay. Wow. Which is a bit different, I've only just, it only just arrived like two days can, ago. So I'm can still you getting... send that brand to me? Can you, can you send that to... Um... Will yeah. you chat it in the box? Can she chat me directly? She can. Yeah. yeah. But chat it to everyone in case anyone else is interested. Wait, in this ceramic to know to? Um, that's the company. The logo. Oh, Slice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. Great. Does anyone else also, we would like to know the ceramic plate. Yes, people right. like to know that. It looks like it's slice. I commented. <laughs> uh, I wonder if the ceramic blades actually last longer than the stainless steel blades because I always have to switch mine like every so often. They say that they do. Like I said, I've only had it a couple of days and I'm still sort of getting used to it. But I've read that it lasts longer than the uh, the metal blades. So it's just like um, the ceramic kitchen knives. Like now, it's like all the rage, right? They yeah, replace, yeah. A lot of people use it instead of the stainless steel knives. So I think it has hit the craft night yeah. market, right? The ceramic. Yeah, so far I'm liking it. <laughs> oh, where did you get different. that? Where did you get that? Um, you I ordered it directly from Slice. I think they've got a UK and a US base. So you can get it in the US. Are you from the US? She's no, from the UK. UK. The UK. Yeah, I heard <laughs> the <laughs> accent there. So welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm my God. Awake. <laughs> Where's everyone else uh, logging in today? Yeah, please chat in the chat box and let us know yes, where you're coming know from. Where you were oh, New York, thank you. New York City, a little bit later. Orlando, hi. Hi, Mary. Pennsylvania, that's where I used to live for 14 years. Hi, Pennsylvanian. Tracy, <laughs> it looks like you have a request to add the info number of your knife. <laughs> Greater Boston. Boston, that's where. Um, Los Angeles. Hey, Los Angeles, Maryland. Hi, how are you? Monterey Park. Very the Chinese nice. food's great there. Very <laughs> jealous. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. So, Bovi, do you want to talk about the patterns that yes. everyone has? This is time to talk about the, uh, the patterns. Yeah, and I, I would like to pose a question. This is kind of a test that Bovi and I laughed about that we wanted to, to pose everyone. Of these patterns, when you're learning traditional Chinese paper cutting, which do you think is the first one you learn? So, Out of all the shapes that you are seeing here. I am gonna share the screen in case someone didn't get to print this out because I actually have this on the PowerPoint. 
So someone says, Su Susan, you said moon. That's a good guess. So we write right here. So we have the sun, moon, water drop, geometry, cloud, leaf, saw teeth. Hello from Thailand. Wow. Yeah, Amazing. All right, so we had one guest for the moon. What else? Hello, we? Los Angeles, Lorraine. Salty. <laughs> okay, should we? The sun. Oh my gosh, Rochelle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Rochelle. Rochelle got it right, which is the circle is the one that you would start uh, cutting and you know some really straight master cutter uh, craftsman would would probably make you cut it out from like a blank piece of paper without any drawings on it to help yourself you know you just cut a circle out of like just using scissors without help on a blank piece of paper. So you, let's try that together. Shall we, do we have paper? Yeah. Okay, if you, if have, you paper. have paper, like you can do with me because I made a bunch of uh, cut paper earlier using these uh, basic patterns. So we can practice these basic patterns and make a little uh, quick cut paper together. If you want to do that with me, I would love that. So what you need to do is to start with your uh, rectangular paper, but you need to make it into a square. So I'm going to switch my camera view here. So I don't know everybody's skill level, so I'm just going to start from the beginning. Is If you want to work with a uh, cut paper, generally you want it to be a square piece of paper. So the quickest way to make a square piece of paper is to fold the paper into this fold it up so that it becomes a triangle and then you just cut the part that's rectangle the long narrow rectangle cut it away open it up then it is your square shape paper are we following okay if you have a square piece of paper now Am I going too fast, people? Can you let me know? I think this is good. If, okay, if I need to slow down, you tell me, okay? Okay. So then we are going to fold it in half. And then fold it in half again. Okay, so we have a little square, okay, like so. I feel like I'm washed out in the light, is that right? All right, so now the challenge for everyone is cut a circle out of this piece of paper. So this is a little cheating already, right? Because we folded it. So what you need to cut doing the circle is just to cut this part here. So you just cut a quarter circle, like a curved line. So let's try that. And show me your circle once you have it, okay? So try to imagine how it, how that curve needs to be when you're cutting it. So you want to make it a perfect circle, if possible, without using any tools, just your, just the accuracy of your eye and your hand coordination. Okay, so. That's my circle. What do you think? That's pretty good. It looks kind of like a melon. <laughs> so we can like <laughs> kind of perfect it, right? So you can kind of perfect it because Sam Buddhists, they spend their entire life cutting this 30, 40, 50 years to make it perfect. So Okay, I'm almost there, okay? I'm almost there. But it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, just so that this is usually a training for eye-hand coordination, right? Because accuracy 
and precision is so important in cut paper. So if you have that skill, you know, uh, and the motor skill and the eye-hand coordination, then you have, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of cutting whatever you want down the road. Does anyone have their circle to share? Can someone share their circle with me? This is my circle after I edited it. Oh, I see Kavine. Very nice circle. Very good. Carol, that looks like a perfect oh, Wow. Guy. Carol, John. Wow. You all, you all already, all, all of you have a lot of experience already. I know. I think oh my god. I think they're all Zen Zen Buddhist monks. They know circles. I think well. you are all you are all already masters in this. Okay. Great, beautiful. All right, so now let's fold it back. So if you only fold it twice and you cut a shape, let's cut a very simple uh like the pointy part, the cone, the shape, the cone end part. Let's just cut something like a square, right? So if you just need to make one cut in the in the tip there, just one cut. So you can keep opening it up and see what result you're getting. Right? So this is this perfect little diamond shape or a square. So as if you fold it back up and you uh, keep folding, right? So now if you fold again, and it sort of looks like an ice cream cone shape now, right? So you know that how many, how many shapes will you be cutting out on both sides, right? Okay, let's do the, the leaf shape, the number six here. But you only need to cut half of it, okay? So imagine just cutting half of the leaf and you cutting, cutting with the edge that's folded, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Can you move the camera a little bit, Bovi, closer to where you're cutting? Or move yeah. your... Oh, wait. Right. Yeah. I see, kind of like a... So this is the part I'm cutting out. So I'm gonna open it up. Voila, so you have this shape. If you keep, like if you cut the other side a different shape, uh, you can just cut uh, straight lines, for example, just cut a triangle, maybe a small triangle first, and then a bigger triangle. And another bigger one, almost to the top, but don't ever cut overlap shapes or cut through anything because then it will fall apart. So then you have this shape, cool. right? Okay, so you can be then creative. And if you have strong fingers and strong hands and strong arms, you can fold it even more. Okay, so make sure you check the back side, if put the back side and the front side, and that when you make the next cut, that you're not cutting through anything, okay? So the, the tip is to not cut through things, like shapes. So then I'm gonna just cut uh, a uh, circle. So Bovi, since it seems like a decent amount of people in our workshop actually have exacto uh, knives, do you mind uh -huh. maybe showing a couple more advanced moves on this that they could use for their paper doll when they feel they're ready to move to that? Oh, okay, so great. So then just using scissors, you can make actually quite complex mm -hmm. shapes, right? And if you start using knives, this is the example I made earlier. So the, the teeth, uh, the saw teeth pattern, that you need to use knives most likely. Okay, so this I use knife to cut. Then you can add details to it. And this really small water drop shape, right, that I use knives to cut. So what I'm saying is, if you only want to use scissors, you can make cuts like these, right? But if you want to use knives, you can build onto it and make it super intricate and delicate, okay? So does anyone have any scissor cut 
shape to show me? Mm -hmm. Can you hold it up on your screen? Awesome, beautiful. You are all great students. Wonderful. So I think we, we understand the folding technique, right? And how to make uh, everything connected. Okay, wonderful. Okay, great. So I have this one here. Should I demonstrate cutting this a bit? I think that that would be cool. Um, right, because that would be, that's all knife cut. Okay, and you saw the end result. Right, that's yeah. what's like I think it would be interesting. And of course, anyone jump in if you have specific questions, since it seems like we have some pretty seasoned paper cut artists. Um, start demonstrating a little bit more advanced moves with your X Acto knife. So I have so someone I here. Yeah, show us an example with your knife, is what I'm seeing from our chat. Oh, okay. So right now I'm going to cut. Can you see well? I feel like the light is quite strong there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I think what would be slightly challenging would be when you're cutting the fan because the lines there are quite thin. So, um, of course, our paper cutter always pride themselves with the thinner the lines you can cut. You know the the you know the higher level of skills you have. And so I'm going to. While you're watching Bovi, like feel free to make on the template that we provided you. If you didn't come with a knife, um, this is a moment where we encourage you to collage, think about your identity, and what you would want to add to the template that we provided. So I'm cutting the fan out very carefully in like thin lines. Now, one of the tips that I always give people is when you're cutting thin lines, when you go, when you, when you go to the, um, where two points meeting, like, you want to lift your knife up like this so that you don't overcut. Otherwise, it will cut, you would, it would cut the line, it, the, uh, the line will break. Right, you lift it up like that. So, so this is the, okay, everybody can, everybody cut some really thin lines for me to show straight thin lines. Oops. How thin can your lines go? <laughs> Who has lines ready to show me? Really thin ones. Not yet. Not yet? Okay, I want to see lines like about this thin, okay? It would be about, let me measure this. Maybe one millimeter. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> two millimeters, two millimeters. I don't have a knife, but what I'm doing right now is I'm collaging using some old mail that I received because of this lockdown. I have a ton of mail. <laughs> Okay, do I have any examples to see? Let's see some show me, more. okay, show me your screen when you're ready. Oh, Suzanne, it looks like, oh, and Tracy, that's a really thin one. That is very good. So now to be, to be a good paper cut artist, your line quality has to be very good. So what you want to practice, if you really are serious about this medium, what I want you to do is to practice cutting really long, straight, thin lines to begin with, to practice that uh, uh, precision without using rulers, right? So 
you want to be able to have very steady hand and cut continuous lines without breaking and that the line is straight, it's not shaky or curved in any way, and that they are parallel. Mm. So in fact, that is a quite an advanced exercise, but, but I, I like to, I have I a like question to tackle. from Charity. Uh, Charity's asking, are you just cutting inside of the lines, Bobby? I am cutting inside the line, right. You always cut inside the line. But if you don't have a uh, template, you draw ahead of time, you're just cutting on a blank piece of paper. Your mind is to create that, that line for you to, to follow so you don't cut through. So what you want to achieve is, is something like this, right? You want to achieve really straight long lines and they are thin and you don't cut through it, you don't break it, and they're straight and parallel. So spend some time to practice and try to master that. Yeah, we're, we're actually reaching our last five minutes of this workshop. Okay, so then the other really hard things to cut is a perfect circle, just cut it out. <laughs> Not using scissors, but using knives. So you also want to uh, practice that. And what I do is I rotate the paper, like I rotate the paper, like I would start with one point and I can rotate the paper this way to help me cut the circle. Or if you, because sometimes you might be working on a really big piece, you can't rotate the paper, then you just have to rotate your wrist. Right, you cut the first half and then you cut the second half. So what you want to do is also to practice cutting good curves, good straight lines. That's a very good way to start. And then after these two shapes, then you would want to practice the cloud shape where you are doing curving linear shapes, Are there any other types of cuts that anyone wants to see specifically while we have Bodhi for oh. the last few minutes? Okay. So what I encourage you guys to do if you're new, very new to cut paper, you can trace your knife using these templates, right? So you just follow the lines and practice all of the shapes and then try to do it on your own freehand doing it on your own. So that would take you some time to get through all of these basic shapes. Bovi, what is the hardest uh, type of line that you, that you would say is like the most difficult line for a paper cut artist? It's straight lines because we are not robots, right? We are not a machine. And when we don't use ruler, it's, in, it's very hard to, to cut uh, straight lines completely straight without using any help. So there was like a piece that was three feet across. So it's about this big. Where am I in my camera? Like this big. <laughs> and there's, there's lines going through from like everywhere like that. So the lines are all one millimeter long. So to not cut through it, because the paper I use is thin too. The paper I use is much thinner than uh, this uh, photo paper. So I use Chinese uh, paper, right? I use Chinese rice paper. So that, doing that kind of cut is, you know, because you can't go back, you know, if it's broken, it's broken. 
-hmm. First of all, that's, that's that sense of threat and danger that's also thrilling when you can pull it off. And I'm always just about that adrenaline rush, you know, when I can pull that off. Um, so we have a question from Charity. Do you have an Instagram? Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Do you I do paper cutting as a hobby. And can you recommend someone to follow for those of us who are new to this type of paper crafting? Uh, I would follow, oh my God, like, who do I follow? Who do you follow? Um, you know that I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't know. I don't, I don't really follow paper cutters. If you think of anyone you want to share, we can definitely share out some, some resources after this too. Just yeah. Like no, I like different kinds of cut paper uh, that are different than the way I do mine. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a friend whose name is Brian Detmer. He cuts books. I don't know if anyone knows Brian Detmer. Has anyone heard of that Brian Detmer's work? And of course, I love Kara Walker. Mm, yes. uh, Kara Walker cuts silhouettes. Uh, she doesn't cut the inside meaning. Okay, she only cut the out the outside. And I love um, Mia Perlman. She does insulation artwork. Um, I love this Chinese artist. Uh, actually, I went to meet him in Beijing. He taught at uh, the Central Academy of Fine Arts. His name is Lu Shen Zhong. And I really, really love his work. He inspired me a great deal. Uh, so another question here is from Eunice. Sometimes just cutting for one to two hours hurts my fingers already. Ow. Does that happen to you? Any tip to prevent that pain? Oh my goodness. Oh yes, I share your pain. Yes. Do you have collars? Like I have a collars like on my finger right here. Uh, <laughs> oh, poor Eunice. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think no pain, no gain. <laughs> That's my philosophy, you know. So, I mean, people, people always ask me why I'm, I do my work this way. is because I, I feel that way, you know. I feel, I feel incredibly alive when I'm doing it. It's because my body feels it. Because nowadays we're always on the computer and just like our little finger clicking stuff. You know, and then our head, our head space is all occupied. Mm -hmm. We don't really use the rest of our body. But for cut paper, you have to be so mindful and conscious and connecting your mind, your brain with your, uh, with your whole body, your breath, right? You slow down and then hours pass by. And then when you get up, like every time after four or five hours went by, when I get up, I'd be like, oh, 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 oh my God, right? So I somehow find that sensation of my body, you know, very essential to feel present. So yes, your fingers will have to get used to it now. Right, so. so um, we are now pretty much at the end. We're a little past the end of our workshop today. Um, I know it went by so fast. I wanted to invite Bovi, if you're okay with it, because I want to be cognizant of your time, that we get maybe one more paper cutting example, and then we all say thank you, and maybe show some of the work that we've done today. Mine is definitely not as detailed as Bovi's. <laughs> um, but Bovi, can you show us maybe one more example that you'd like to, for the crowd to see? Okay, how about I cut a, a, a braid? Oh my gosh, Becky, that is an amazing, I'm just seeing Becky's, uh, is that a Statue oh, of Liberty that. Fire? <laughs> how cool. Super so, cool. 
this world. <laughs> this Ooh, world. Wow. That is so cool. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> so I hope you guys will create the paper doll and build your identity images Bobby, on top of it. Can you, can you move your um, camera a little bit? We're actually not it's out of this shot. There we go. Here. Okay. So I'm cutting this rope shape. Wow. You make it look so easy. <laughs> so the rope shape is so uh, help, so useful. You can do hair pattern, clothing pattern, uh, rope pattern. Any very cool. So also how you sort of build it so it, it looks somewhat three-dimensional and curved correctly is important. So okay. Cool. Well, I think at this point, if everyone could maybe share the progress that they have so far, um, I'd love to get another screenshot. And then, of course, whenever you take the time, because obviously this is not a quick, a quick project, um, take a picture and share it with us on Instagram. Oh my God, there is already a paper doll. I love it. I love it. Wait, can I see the I paper love doll? it. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you, Carol. So Do cool. I have more? Okay, wow, you. beautiful. Lou. Lou, Lou I love that like so much. Love that so much. It's beautiful. I gotta show you something else. Let's see. Oh my oh. god. Oh, wow. She's so hardworking. Wow, beautiful. The oh, it is three-dimensional. Oh my god, that's complex. It's a card. That is awesome. That's very cool. Right? That's all the straight lines, right? Did you cut them? Yes. Beautiful. You have such great skills. Okay. So if everybody has their, eventually you can upload yours. If you upload yours, uh, you can tag me on Instagram and I'll show it. Yes, please. So the, uh, and the museum. Well, right. The purpose is that we will link all the images together so they, they are connecting, holding hands like that, so that it sort of is a, it's a statement that we make that even though we are apart now, but we are connected together through art so if you have yours done send me a picture or send the museum a picture so we can link them all together so we have like a chain of people like little little people connected yes. to each other even during this time even during this time it's all the more important that we connect with each other right yeah so be like this so I just want to say thank you again, everyone, for logging in from, from the UK, from Thailand, from Philadelphia, Boston. UK. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I am really, really thrilled with how this turned out. I thought we had a lot of great conversation, and it just shows that even during this time that we may feel kind of separated right now, we're still finding ways to connect and be creative during this time. So thank you, Bovi. Uh, can we all give her just at least a little video, like handshake, as a thank you? So thank handshake, you so much. Hug, hug, hug. hug. So, uh, <laughs> someone, uh, I think Tracy asked whether there's a deadline to do the paper doll image. Oh. Uh, Jenny Lim, what do you think? Two weeks? Do you think two weeks you guys can upload something for us or I one week? Alyssa actually is on as my social media person. Maybe she can speak to that, but I think two weeks seems very reasonable. We can let you what know, you we'll, we'll, we'll email the participants. Okay. <laughs> but thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a good night. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can DM me over Instagram. I'm at Tofi Lee on Instagram. I'm most active on Instagram. But you can also find me on Facebook. Okay? <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.